zero carbon emissions, no use of fossil fuels within 12 years. That is the goal. It's ambitious. And How is that possible? Are you talking about everybody having to drive an electric car? It's going to require a lot of rapid change that we don't even conceive as possible right now. What is the problem with trying to push our technological capacities to the furthest extent possible? I mean, notice this. This is uh, worth commenting on because you'll, you'll hear a lot of this from the left as they pursue this green revolution, green agenda, green new deal, they're calling it. This is their moonshot. This is uh, JFK challenging the scientists of the American people, challenging NASA, challenging the America to put a man on the moon. Seemingly uh, 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 an, an, an extravagant task, something that the technology, when he, when he proposed it, did not really exist. Uh, but mustering resources, sacrificing what needed to be sacrificed monetarily, tax-wise, and investing it all into doing something big, right? Something exciting something that could galvanize the country. Now she's taking a topic that the left is committed to, a topic that the right has very little to say against, which is uh, reducing carbon emissions basically to zero, which is of course impossible, but, but put that aside. And she's saying, well, let's, let's think big. Let's shoot for something exciting. Let's shoot for something, you know, really radical. And let's challenge ourselves to get there. Let's get our best minds, our best scientists, thinking about how to do it. And if we need to sacrifice, if we need to raise taxes, we'll get to taxes in a minute, then let's do it. Sacrifice is noble, sacrifice is good after all. She doesn't say that, but that's implicit. It's a goal worth sacrificing for. Now, this is the kind of idealism people respond to. This is the kind of idealism young people are going to get excited by. Oh, let's reduce carbon emissions by 15%, or let's reduce carbon emissions by this, or let's have a carbon tax. All the regular democratic arguments. No, that's not interesting. Let's go all out. Now, notice, too, the Democrats do this, or the left does this all the time. 50 years ago, really 75 years ago, Democrats started saying, we want single-payer universal socialized medicine. We want complete socialized medicine. And we're challenging the American people to do that. And everybody said, oh, that's crazy, that's socialism, we don't want that. And slowly, inch by inch, we have moved in that direction. And notice, too, that the right never does that. The right never says, we want 100% private health care. We don't want any government involvement in health care. We don't want Medicare. We don't want Medicaid. We do not want government in health care. We want it 100% private. And yeah, we'll move inch by inch towards that, but we've set the goalpost. We know where we're heading. <laughs> the right never does that. Republicans never do that. Conservatives never do that. The left is so much more principled in that sense. They know what they want. They're willing to say it. They're willing to say it because it's consistent with the moral views of the people. They're willing to fight for it. They're willing to state, to state, that it's their ambition, that their ultimate goal, even though in the meantime, we might compromise on the way there. So she says zero carbon emissions. We're going to have everybody driving an electric car. We're going to solve all the technological problems. I'm challenging you to that. And of course, she knows, everybody knows, it won't happen tomorrow. It won't happen five years from now. But if she keeps pushing that, and if people rally around that, then you're going to have a deal with Republicans to cut emission by 10%, and then by 20%, and then by 90%, and then we get what she wants. But you gotta set a dream. You gotta set a standard. And what are Republicans gonna say? It's too expensive. It's too expensive. They're not gonna morally argue 
against the goal. And therefore she wins. She wins. And, and that's where we're heading, guys. We're heading towards her views becoming more and more and more mainstream and her views becoming more and more part of the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party gaining more and more and more political power because the Republicans have no answer. And the only way the Republicans, the only way the Republicans will stay in power is by turning to the left, is by becoming Democrats, which is what they've done since the New Deal, what they've done since the 1930s. They've adopted elements of their democratic platform in order to appeal to the masses, in order to gain political power. I mean, Donald Trump with tariffs, that's a leftist agenda, which he has adopted to appeal to the masses. I would even argue the anti-immigration stance has always been a stance of the left, the, the, the pro-union left, which did not want competition for labor. And the right has now adopted those stances. The left always wins in the long run because it takes the moral high ground. The moral high ground for their perverse morality, but the moral high ground of the morality that exists in the culture, the morality of altruism, the morality of sacrifice, the morality of otherism, the morality that says that you should always take care of others. And, if you, and since we're all too selfish to do it, government has to make sure that it gets done. Government has to force us to sacrifice appropriately for, the man, for, for, for those who do not have, for those in need. So, you know, she's laying out a big, audacious goal. And she's rallying people to the cause. She's rallying people around that goal. Very powerful, very powerful tactic um, and, and very successful. Uh, Jennifer asks, young people love Bernie. Do you think she'll be even more popular? Yes, I think she will be more popular than Bernie. I mean, she's young. Uh, she's much more attractive than Bernie. She's a woman. And I think at the end of the day, I think she's more articulate and, and has more authenticity than Bernie Sanders, who has three homes and, uh, you know, is, is, is kind of old and, uh, you know, doesn't fit the whole, um, the whole identity politics that young people didn't really associate with, didn't really identify with him. If you remember, Black Lives Matter uh, demonstrated Bernie Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders' events because he wasn't politically correct enough for them. I think she's Hispanic. She, she, you know, she's got all the, all the things that you need in order to uh, qualify as a superior candidate. So yes, she's too young to run for president, so she won't anytime soon. But it's gonna be interesting who she supports. And that's gonna make a big difference, who she, who she lands up supporting for the Democratic nomination, which is gonna be a fun race to watch. It's gonna be a fun race to watch.